Thanks for joining us. You're watching Arirang News on Wednesday, March 20th. I'm Han Dan in Seoul. After the North Korea-U.S. summit in Hanoi ended without a deal, inter-Korean business projects have also hit a snag. North Korea is now showing a passive approach to the inter-Korean projects that were agreed upon last year. And with the toughest ever sanctions still imposed on Pyongyang, the two Koreas are facing a bumpy road ahead. Today, we go in-depth on the stalled inter-Korean projects after the Hanoi summit with an expert. But first, let's check what's making the headlines at this hour, and this is our top story today. The United States is ramping up pressure on North Korea, sending a strong message almost on a daily basis since the Hanoi summit. Today, Washington's top security advisor reiterated that the U.S. won't be too happy if the North decides to go ahead with nuclear tests, calling on North Korea to make the right move by keeping its promise to denuclearize. Our Kim Hyo-san starts us off. White House National Security Advisor John Bolton admits a new missile or nuclear test by North Korea would have a, quote, real impact on President Trump. Speaking with Fox Business Network on Tuesday, he explained that President Trump has said he would be very, very disappointed if the North resumes testing. Bolton also quoted Trump as saying it was a commitment North Korean leader Kim Jong-un made several times. This is interpreted as a warning that the North's threat to restart nuclear MSL tests could bring about changes in the Trump administration's North Korean policies. Bolton, who has long held hawkish views on North Korea, also said the regime will be granted a bright economic future once it abandons its weapons of mass destruction and ballistic missiles. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has once again stressed the need for verifiable measures for the complete denuclearization of North Korea. Speaking with local media in Kansas on Tuesday, Pompeo said it's time the North Korean leaders show action, considering the distrust between Washington and Pyongyang. Such a remark is a reaffirmation of another interview during which he said the U.S. has strong intentions to hold dialogue with the North only under the precondition that the regime moves first with verifiable steps for denuclearization. Kim Hyo-san, Arirang News. Meanwhile, the UK and Germany have reiterated their stance that sanctions will need to be in place until North Korea takes complete denuclearization measures. Radio Free Asia reported that this was the outcome of the meeting between Washington's special representative for North Korea, Stephen Began, and his British, German, and French counterparts on Tuesday. The British Foreign Affairs Ministry told RFA that it'll continue to support Washington's efforts to achieve North Korea's denuclearization. Germany's foreign ministry called upon the North to unequivocally commit to complete, verifiable, irreversible denuclearization and added that unless there are concrete steps towards that, sanctions will remain in place. North Korea and the U.S. have been going toe-to-toe -to -toe over sanctions at the United Nations headquarters as well. The reclusive regime says it has done enough over the past year to have those sanctions removed. Well, the U.S. says the North must abandon all of its weapons of mass destruction first. Arirang's Lee seung with more. At a U.N. disarmament conference in Geneva on Tuesday, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Arms Control, Verification and Compliance said the only way for North Korea to achieve security and development is to abandon all of its weapons of mass destruction and ballistic missile programs. She also urged countries to halt any weapons or military cooperation with the regime. Our stance is unwavering with regard to North Korea. North Korea must understand that the only way to achieve the security and development that it seeks is to abandon all of its weapons of mass destruction all of its ballistic missile programs as numerous UN Security Council resolutions demand, as numerous UN Security Council resolutions demand. In response, North Korea said there were no legitimate reasons to maintain sanctions on the regime since it has not conducted any weapons tests for well over a year. The U.S. publicly recognized the DPRK had discontinued the nuclear test and rocket launch for the past 15 months. However, it does nothing to remove the U.S. sanctions as a corresponding measures. Instead, they came up with a preposterous argument 
that sanction relief is impossible prior to denuclearization. We found that the U.S. calculation quite odd, and such gangster-like gangster -like position doubtlessly will drive the situation in danger. He added the U.S. had promised to take corresponding measures during their first summit in Singapore. Instead, according to Ju, President Trump came up with what he called a preposterous argument that sanctions relief is impossible prior to denuclearization. Lee seung Arirang News. South Korea and Russia have been sharing their evaluations on the latest developments surrounding the Korean Peninsula post-Hanoi summit. Seoul Special Representative for Korean Peninsula Peace and Security Affairs Lee Do-hun met with Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Igor Morgulov in St. Petersburg Tuesday. They discussed denuclearization, achieving lasting peace in the region, and maintaining close cooperation. EE will be in Brussels for the next couple of days to attend a session of the EU's Political and Security Committee. President Moon Jae-in has ordered his top economic policymaker to continue working to deliver on the administration's policy of innovative growth to help create jobs in the private sector. In a meeting with Hong Nam-gi, the finance minister who doubles as the deputy prime minister, the president asked for the minister's utmost efforts to achieve tangible improvements in consumer sentiment and the job market. The president also recently called for the revitalization of key manufacturing industries as a way to help the Korean economy. After falling for four consecutive months, producer prices in South Korea rose slightly last month. The Bank of Korea says the production price index, a barometer of future consumer inflation, edged up 0.1 percent on month in February. The central bank says higher services prices and industrial goods prices, like global oil prices and raw materials, offset lower agricultural and electronics goods prices. The United States became the fifth biggest oil exporter to South Korea last year. And our Kim Dami explains why South Korea has been importing more and more U.S. crude oil. South Korea was the world's number two importer of U.S. crude oil in 2018, outstripping China. Last year, South Korea brought in around 61 million barrels from the U.S., which is around 6 percent of the country's total oil imports. This made the U.S. the fifth largest exporter to Korea after Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iraq and the United Arab Emirates. From 2017, South Korea's imports of American crude began to grow sharply because of price competitiveness. While prices of oil produced in the Middle East rose last year due to U.S. sanctions against Iran, U.S. crude became cheaper as the country increased its shale oil production. One main reason is that the price gap between Dubai crude and West Texas intermediates widened to eight U.S. dollars per barrel last year which led to local oil companies' preference for U.S. crude oil. Market observers added that the size of South Korea's oil imports from the U.S. will depend on whether a WTI remained significantly cheaper than Dubai crude. Kim Dami, Arirang News. An investigation into a strong earthquake that jolted the southeastern city of Pohang in 2017 finds that it was triggered by a geothermal power plant. A team of researchers from around the world, led by the Geological Society of Korea, conducted a year-long investigation to find the cause of Korea's second largest earthquake on record. The investigation concluded that there have been five stimuli from excavations at a geothermal power plant since 2015, which eventually triggered the earthquake. Local citizens are now up in arms and are likely to file a lawsuit against the government for compensation. Back to the issue of inter-Korean projects after the No Deal Hanoi Summit. While various inter-Korean business projects are technically at hold, inter-Korean video reunions have received a green light from the UN and the U.S. 
And the digital reunion may not be just for war-torn families here in South Korea, but for Korean Americans in the United States as well. Seoul's Unification Ministry says that it's preparing to discuss with North Korea on including Korean American families in the video reunions with their long-lost North Korean relatives. The government is yet to begin talks with North Korea on the matter, but is preparing to do so. South Korea received all the necessary sanctions waivers for video reunions with the North through its recent working group meeting with the U.S. Seoul is reviewing the budget needed for related renovations and items. And to go in-depth on the impact of the No Deal Hanoi Summit on inter-Korean projects, let's connect with Dr. Min Jong-hun, professor at the Korea National Diplomatic Academy. Thank you for your time, professor. My pleasure. Inter-Korean projects have hit a snag, especially after the Hanoi Summit, but the silver lining here is that the video reunions of families separated by the Korean War got the green light from the UN and the US. I want to start off by talking a little bit about the significance or implications of the planned video family reunions. Well, first, I want to say that um, the video reunion of the separated Korean families is uh, nothing to do with uh, the U U.S. or U.N. economic sanctions on North Korea. It's a humanitarian measure, so it can go uh, apart from the, uh, the economic sanctions imposed to North Korea. But, you know, we got a little bit uh, embarrassing situation where um, the two leaders of uh, U.S. and North Korea uh, failed to reach an agreement uh, recently in Hanoi uh, when they got the second summit between them. So the U.S., North Korea, U.S. relations have been a little bit uh, the hard and the cold. So at this, uh, at this time, uh, if we have uh, the so inter-Korean cooperation in terms of the, the video reunion for the Korean families, could kind of the, the warming or the open the, open the, the talk between the, uh, the North Korea and the United States, and it would be a little good sign. And that we can, we can uh, make the North Korea and the U.S., especially North Korea, uh, stay in the negotiations. Now, the U.S. has also given a sanctions waiver on U.S.-made materials that need to cross the border to the North for the video reunion. You've mentioned that this has nothing to do with the Hanoi summit or the nuclear deal. But how should we interpret this particular sanctions relief from U.S.? Well, the, it's, uh, although it uh, has nothing to do with the, uh, the North Korea-U.S. Uh, negotiations or the North Korea nuclear issue, ish, but it can have uh, some kind of impact uh, to the, the U.S., uh, North Korea-U.S. Uh, negotiation because uh, North Korea got the serious sanctions from U U.S. and the uh, international community, and uh, that makes North Korea really uh, difficult in terms of the doing the, the daily lives for its people. So um, the North Korea has argued that U.S. and the international community have relieved the sanctions just for the, the, its people's daily lives. And uh, the relieving sanctions or the, the examining with the waiving sanctions in terms of the, the video reunion, uh, it's uh, really a positive sign that U.S. Uh, got a little bit the, the uh, opening the stance in terms of the imposing sanctions to North Korea. But the, it's just still the low level and the just starting points of relieving sanctions or waiving sanctions, but it, it should be a good sign. Now that the U.N. and the U.S. have given the green light, it's up to the two Koreas to make the video reunions happen. But we're hearing that the weekly inter-Korean meetings that are supposed to be held through the uh, Joint Liaison Office have been put on hold for almost three weeks now. What's your take on that? Well, uh, I think it's because of the results of the Hanoi summit. You know, as I mentioned earlier today, the two leaders uh, met in Hanoi and uh, they got their talks for two days, but uh, they failed to reach an agreement. 
So the, after having such kind of the result, North Korea is, I think, it's very busy to review and uh, the, just to evaluate what happened in Hanoi. And uh, they are preparing for uh, the next step the, for the, uh, the, U, the negotiation with the United States. So North Korea needs time before they are re resuming any, ty any type of the other uh, talks or dialogue and activities with the United States and South Korea. So I think that um, North Korea is going through the, that kind of the, the preparation time, but and uh, either take uh, about the other uh, th three or four weeks. So we need to wait. Now to the inter-Korean military talks. You've mentioned that North Korea needs more time now, but North Korea has shown a passive approach to military talks as well. Uh, despite a joint recovery operation planned for next month, I believe it's set for April 1st, which is less than two weeks from now. How do you see this? Well, I personally hope that the uh, inter-Korean talks for the, the military uh, the areas uh, should go without the other negotiations between North Korea and the United States. But North Korea got the, such uh, the important the meaning to the negotiation with the United States. So the inter-Korean projects, including the military talks between the two Koreas, uh, got a serious impact from what happened uh, in terms of the, the U.S., North Korea-U.S. Uh, talks. So again, um, the North Korea is having a preparation time. So North Korea is very careful in terms of expressing any uh, opinions about inter-Korean projects, including uh, military talks. So that's why the North Korea is pass the passive uh, nowadays in terms of the, the military talks with South Korea. So we need to have we need to give some time to North Korea before it responds to. To South Korea's call. North Korea has actively pushed for inter-Korean projects regardless of a delay or the results of its talks with Washington so far, but it seems a little different this time. Like you said, it, it looks like North Korea needs much more time this time. What are your thoughts on that? Well, again, uh, North Korea needs time and uh, uh, North Korea's negotiations with the United, United States uh, could be the, uh, the top priority that uh, its people and uh, its regime, North Korean regime, has. So without the progress in terms of the other uh, talks with the United States, any other low-level talks or the other, any other related talks, including inter-Korean talks, should be either, uh, affected by that. So North Korea is stopping almost all talks with the, the South Korea and the, it takes time the, to talk, the, the prepare for the next step with the United States and South Korea. So that's why we are seeing the, uh, the, this kind of the, the little bit difficult time uh, nowadays. So we need to wait. Now, do you think the Pyongyang-Washington nuclear deadlock will last for a long time? And if so, would the long-term deadlock have a big impact on inter-Korean projects that were agreed upon last year? Well, I don't think that um, North Korea will take uh, uh, much long time before it resumes talk with, talks with the United States and South Korea because the, the North Korea uh, uh, recognized that, you know, long-term parts of the, uh, the talks could mean the uh, negative impact to the other uh, talks with the other uh, U.S. and the South Korea, especially uh, talks with in terms of talks with the, the North United States. The in the United States, there is still the uh, the huge amount of pessimism about the uh, the whether North Korea is sincere in terms of denuclearizing, denuclearizing itself. So, if uh, North Korea takes too too long time before before resuming its talks talks with the United States, uh, that pessimism in the United States uh, should grow the bigger and bigger. And that means that the President Trump got the bigger the pressure in terms of the, uh, the stopping or the changing its the opinion and the posture uh, dealing with the North Korean issues. So it, it should not be a good sign or the good signal to anyone involved in the talks. 
So I think that North Korea will take uh, just a couple of or the, uh, three or four weeks before it the, uh, the completes its review and evaluations of the current situation and then try to find the, uh, the, so the path to the, uh, the regime that talks with the United States. And I think that that role should be done by South Korea. Well, that, I was just about to ask you that. That brings us to our next question. What approach should South Korea take from this point on with regards to inter-Korean projects despite numerous obstacles? The first, I think that, uh, uh, the, I think that South Korea takes uh, two, two steps the, in terms of the, uh, the, the making or the leading the, uh, the North Korea and the United States regime their talks. First, wait and second, facilitating role. First, the South Korea allow North Korea and the United States uh, to think about and review and evaluate the, the, what happened in Hanoi and the, what kind of the next step they need to show. So two countries need to have some time before regiming talks. So South Korea should recognize that the importance of the allowing them to have such kind of time. And then after that, uh, South Korea needed to take uh, the very active facilitating role to bring the two countries back to the negotiation table. At the, the currently, the two countries, North Korea and the U.S., got their very their different difficult situations in terms of the changing their opinions first because of the failure of the, uh, the reaching an agreement in Hanoi. It means that if North Korea or United States, one party need to, to, uh, to want to change their opinion or the, uh, the posture about the, uh, the, the other party, it means that the dead party, the, the, the country, got the, uh, the responsibility in terms of the, uh, the failing to reach an agreement in Hanoi. So any country, North Korea or the, uh, the United States, could not move first. So they got their very difficult stalemate or the uh, deadlock situation. And that deadlock should be the, uh, resolved by the uh, third party or the facilitator, South Korea. So South Korea needed to take active the facilitate, facilitating role with an alternative that bring two countries to narrow down in terms of their arguments. So that South Korea first talked to North Korea and listened to what Chairman Kim wants and deliver the, what Chairman Kim wants to the United States, President Trump. Just the other tried to the other communicate with the North Korea and the United States and then try to the other provide the alternative uh, to the other two countries and uh, try to bring them back to the negotiation table. So close inter-Korean communication looks important down the road. Now, U.S. National Security Advisor Bolton said that if North Korea decides to resume nuclear and missile tests, it would have a quote-unquote real impact on President Trump. How do you interpret this comment? Yes, a real impact. Uh, the, I think that the, the, um, the Bolton sent send, send, uh, the very strong the, the warning to North Korea. You know, um, President Trump has argued that the, the biggest, the biggest achievement he has got uh, from the, uh, the talks with North Korea is that North Korea has uh, stopped the nuclear missile test since it got the, uh, the negotiations with the Trump administration. So it means that stopping, or they're stopping nuclear and the missile tests by North Korea is the threshold to the uh, the to make the United States remain in the negotiation. It means that if the North Korea violates or did break down that the threshold, it means that the United States could walk away from the negotiation. So President Trump doesn't want to see that kind of bad situation. So President Trump has the, been sending the such a very strong the, the warning signal to North Korea that North Korea should not resume the, the nuclear or, or nuclear and the missile the violation or the other provocation. Now, one last question before I let you go. Uh, North Korea's Vice Foreign Minister Choi Sun-hee recently has stated that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un would soon 
make an official announcement on North Korea's post-Hanoi summit plans. What kind of diplomatic strategies do you expect from Kim Jong-un? Well, the, it, it sh should be open to any possibilities, like in the other, resuming the other, um, the nuclear missile, the other provocation, or the just the water, the, the, the express uh, the, his opinions that the, the, he still want to the, talk with the President Trump or the, the other types of the, the, so the, the, the dialogues. But the, the, I don't think that the, the President, the, the Chairman Kim, would make a comment that the, the North Korea would resume the, the nuclear and the missile the, the provocation because it means that it, the, the, there's a North Korea want to walk away from the negotiation. I don't think that Chairman Kim uh, would want to see such kind of bad situation like the other uh, President Trump in the United States. So I expect personally that the Chairman Kim would show the low level, low level kind of, kind of response or the other uh, reactions to the other uh, uh, the U United States the other uh, so the argument. The, it means that the, the North Korea, the Chairman Kim, tried to appeal to international community that North Korea has taken the precursor, the many the the, um, the nuclear the uh, measures, but North, the, you, North Korea has not gotten got any kind of corresponding measures from the United States. So the, the North Korea, the Chairman Kim, would appeal the international community and push U.S. to take the corresponding measures. And that kind of the other so is a, the most expected the other responses from the, the North Korea, but the that tone should be low, so low key responses from the North Korea. It means that North Korea still wanna talk with the United States and wanna make a progress in terms of the denuclearization and U.S. corresponding measures. Well, we're standing at quite a crucial. Crossroads. Thank you so much, Dr. Min, for your insights today. And that Thanks is so all much. from me. That is all from me. Thank you for being with us. Stay tuned for more news updates throughout the day.